Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Hagerstown. It's great to be here, isn't it? It is. All right. Well, I choose to feel good about my life today. Look beyond appearances and pain in my way. Connect deep down with the spirit inside. Rejuvenate the energy and let God guide. Shine my light to inspire, be real life wide. And that's alright with me. I got love in my heart. I got a whole lot of soul. So let's begin and center ourselves and letting go of any, anything that's distracting us right now as we focus on our heart space. I align my thoughts with the one power and one presence. I align my thoughts with the one power and one presence. I center myself in the sacred flow of God. I am ready and willing to go where spirit within leads me. I am ready and willing to go where spirit within leads me. And so it is. Yes. Thank you so much. And now if you'll join me in our mission statement. Together, Unity of Hagerstown, a welcoming community, embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation, creating a positive path of abundant living for all. And now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word with January Ryder. In the past, I have resisted unwelcome situations and unwanted outcomes. Over time, I have learned that my resistance did little more than leave me agitated and unhappy. I have learned to trade resistance for acceptance. Accepting situations as they are does not mean I like what is happening, but it does mean I am willing to be present to it without resistance or struggle. From that place, I am better able to work toward creating better conditions for myself and others. When I practice acceptance, I invite the presence of God to inspire and comfort me. 
I shift my attention from what might feel wrong to that which is always right, the absolute unchanging goodness of God. And then from Philippians 4.11, not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. And together we say the affirmation, I practice acceptance in my peace. And again, I practice acceptance in my peace. And thank you, January. We'll have another song. If your life is just a dog or pony show, ever ease your mind or feed your soul. And your heart's struck down by an undertone, created by things that you won't let go. Break down your bitterness, break out some blissfulness. Let the light in. Let go of your let downs. Be free and be unbound. Let the light in. If you're frightened by the things that you don't know, if you've been wrong by friend or foe. Before you start finding the toad and toe, remember what you read is what you sow. Try some forgiveness, tend to your tenderness, let the love in. Be blind with kindness, be mine with my kindness, let the love in. All those shadows in your heart can only live there in the dark. Complaining about those above and below. Is only sustaining your grief and woe. If you're only maintaining the status quo, you're never gaining, you'll never grow. Try out some humbleness, try on some thankfulness, let the love be in. Restate your gratefulness. Embrace your graciousness, let the love be in. 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 Let the love So now we come to a time in which we greet our neighbors. And again, a gentle reminder, this is just to say hello, how are you? Not to um, tell our life story. And also, please be aware that not everybody is a hugger. And so ask if before hugging, before going in, because I know this group. Okay. <laughs> so, so let's greet our neighbors and say hello. And also, if you want to come by and say hello to our Facebook friends, please do so. You know, I apologize to you guys because I think I said that too late. They already started getting up and, and, and enjoying themselves. But hopefully some people will come by. I also want to tell you that for um, this lesson for the next four weeks, 
we're doing a complaint-free world. And if you want to join in on the 21-day challenge and you would like to have a purple bracelet, just message me. I'll make sure that you get one, okay? We love you. We appreciate you. Please say something in the comment section so I know who's watching and greet each other. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ding 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 ding. So if you can hear my voice, please be seated, my friends. If you can hear my voice, please be seated. Wow. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. It's always such a lovely time to greet each other. And we'll have time after the service as well, along with coffee and, and snacks for a little chat and chew. <laughs> <laughs> we need to come up with a better name for that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so, so, there was a seeker who wanted to go visit a guru that he had heard about living up far away in the mountains. So he traveled day and night for a very long time to find this guru. And he asked, how long until I reach enlightenment? And the guru answered him, 10 years. And the seeker goes, 10 years? I didn't travel all this way to hear 10 years. And then the guru said, 20 years. <laughs> and he goes, what? do that to me? What are you thinking about? And the guru said, 30 years. And the seeker turned around and walked away. So this story, short as it is, tells us a few things, right? It tells us that the, the spiritual path is a little unpredictable at times. It also tells us that complaining can get in the way of our spiritual journey. It keeps us living in a small frame of mind. And it does more than that, too. Stanford University research has shown that complaining reduces us the size of our hippocampus, which is a part of the brain that's involved in memory, learning, and emotion. And the, the largest job of this part of the brain is to transfer short-term memory into long-term storage. It also plays a role in emotional processing including anxiety and avoidance behaviors. The study found that engaging in complaining or simply listening to others complain for 30 minutes does this damage. Now you may be thinking, well, I don't complain for 30 minutes straight, but I'm not sure it's not accumulative, right? I don't know. Guy Winch, who is a doctor with the Science of Emotional Health podcast, states that research has found that 95% of consumers who have a problem don't go back to the company. They don't complain to the company. Instead, they'll tell their, their, their tale to 8 to 16 people. And that floods the bloodstream with cortisol. And of course, that's the stress hormone. Chronically high levels of cortisol can lead to a variety of health problems, including increased risk of depression, digestive problems, sleep issues. I know. Isn't this amazing research? <laughs> yeah. Higher blood pressure and also uh, risk of heart disease. Winch adds, we tell ourselves that we need to get it off our chest, but each time we do, we get upset all over again. We end up 10 to 12 times more aggravated. And that's because, my friends, the brain sets up a negativity pattern. Repeated complaining rewires the brain to uh, make future complaining easier. It just does, you know. And over time, it's easier to be negative and to, instead of positive, no matter what's going on in your life. Complaining becomes the default behavior. And since humans are inherently uh, social beings, our brains naturally and unconsciously mimic those around us. 
uh, this is called mirroring, uh, particularly people that we spend a great deal of time with. And it's this mirroring is the basis for some wonderful things like empathy you know, it, that helps us to, be, to empathize. But there's a flip side to it as well. It makes complaining kind of like smoking. You don't have to actually be doing it to feel the effects. So constant complainers, as you probably know, want people to join their, their pity party because they can feel better about themselves. So research has shown as well that most people, that means most people in this room or watching now, complain once a minute during a typical conversation. Now, it may be that you don't. I don't know, but you can maybe pay attention. <laughs> Complaining is tempting because it feels good to do so. But like many other things that are enjoyable, like eating cheesecake or... <laughs> <laughs> That's my default, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever it might be, it's just not good for you. So, I'm inviting anybody who wants to join me to give up complaining. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the season of, of Lent, and I thought it might be a good time to give up something. We can tap into the energy, This think about this, there's like 2.4 billion Christians in the, in the world, and approximately 60% of those are giving up something for 40 days, the 40 days of Lent, usually desserts or maybe alcohol, I don't know. But what if we can tap into that energy of release that's going on and release our complaining, release our criticizing, release our gossiping? The word Lent comes from an Anglo-Saxon word for spring, which is derived from another word meaning to lengthen. It's the time when the days lengthen. And it's the observance in the Christian liturgical year uh, uh, commemorating the 40 days of Jesus fasting in the desert and enduring temptation. So it's a time to give up something in order to gain something. Just as our elder brother did, he gave up food. He fasted, but he gained spiritual power. My idea is for any who want to join me to give up complaining in order to gain a happier, healthier life. So here's how it works. This is based in large part on a complaint-free world by Will Bowen. And if you are tempted to go in to join me on this challenge, I highly encourage you to get the book instead of going by yourself. Get the book, come to our discussion class, whatever. But uh, definitely, definitely get some reinforcements there. So if you join the challenge, you can have for free a purple bracelet. And um, the idea is that you start off day one, putting it on one wrist. When you find yourself complaining, not if, but when you find yourself <laughs> complaining, you transfer it over to the other wrist and start on day one again, okay? And the idea is to go 21 days without complaining. Now, this is a long haul. This is not a sprint. Most people go on day one, then day one, then day one, for weeks before they get to maybe day two or three. And Will Bowen, the author of the book, says it typically takes four to eight months to reach those 21 days. <laughs> yeah, that's how ingrained complaining is. So 21 days, by the way, is the length of time it takes to break a habit, to create new habits instead. And while it takes a while, it's really because we're used to getting something through our complaints. Bowen tells us complaining draws all of its essence from negativity. When you typically, when you complain, you typically do it to attract attention or sympathy. You're sending out this vibrational energy that you're a victim, and the universe responds with more negativity. What we send out, we receive back. What we give, we receive. We send out that negativity, it comes back to us in some way. 
Now, complaining, just to be clear, is not to be confused with a statement of fact or an observation. It's a hot day today is a, an observation or a statement of fact. However, if you said, it's a hot day today, what is that? Right, and complain, right? It becomes a complaint. Eckhart Tolle tells us, complaining is not to be confused with informing someone of a mistake or deficiency <coughs> so that it can be put right. And to refrain from complaining doesn't necessarily mean putting up with bad quality or behavior. There is no ego in telling the waiter, your soup is cold and needs to be heated up, if you stick to the facts, which are always neutral. How dare you serve me cold soup? That's complaining. <laughs> so here's the thing. There's that negative energy found in a complaint, and we put that negative energy out. We open a door to experience more negative energy. Our brains are wired that way. I mean, that, that was some, what the research showed. When we complain, we rewire our brains to find more things to complain about. This doesn't mean if you take this challenge that you don't have, you won't ever be able to complain again. It just means for 21 days, we're asking you to go through 21 days in a row to stop complaining. Now you might think that you can't do this. Or perhaps you think, I don't complain that much, which would be wonderful if that's true and I'm happy for you. But perhaps, just consider, it may have become such an ingrained habit, a condition, that you're not noticing it. Complaining is like bad breath. We notice it when it comes out of someone else's mouth, but not when it comes out of ours. Okay? <laughs> Anyway, in the Chinese, the word complain is composed of two symbols, hug and ego. So to complain is to hug your ego, not in a good way. You are telling, you, telling that inner critic within you, you're encouraging it. Yay, good job. <laughs> yeah, you're providing comfort to it, that part that feels isolated, that unworthy and limited. And Complaining also keeps the focus on the problem, not the solution. Now, this is only this challenge is only for complaints said aloud, not for those that we think we never get through 21 days. Well, I'll speak for myself. You know? <laughs> it would be, it would truly be a challenge to get through 21 days if we were doing it mentally too. So, however, when we pay attention to what we are saying. We begin to pay more attention to the thoughts that we are thinking. And why is this important? Because Unity's third principle teaches that we are co-creating our life's experience with, through the energy of our thoughts and our emotions. Now, this is not just found in the Unity faith, but it's around the world. Jesus says, as you believe, so shall it be done to you. The universe has changed. Our life is what our thoughts make it. In the Buddha, we are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. There's others too. I just didn't want to flood them too many. <laughs> In the late 19th century, French psychologist Emile Cui, I hope I said that right, <laughs> noticed that his patients recovered faster if he helped them to expect to, be, to get better, to think about getting better. So he developed what he called auto-suggestions, which are now known as affirmations, right? And just as a side note, the best uh, known auto-suggestion or affirmation he came up with, and I kind of chuckled when I read this, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. <laughs> so we can talk ourselves out of complaining, basically. We can think that we can do it and thus do it. We are creating our experience. Sally Taylor was a Unity minister for 36 years. She was mentored by Johnny Coleman. Uh, you may be familiar with Johnny Coleman. She founded the Soul Food Ministries 
She also served in various ministries around the nation. She said to one of her students, don't come whining to me. You are strong. She was also kind of known not to give her home phone number out to congregants. She, she said, if you need help, don't call me. You need to talk to God within. She didn't put up with anybody complaining, and she was not wrong. That's some tough love. But you are strong. We have the strength of God within us. We can do this challenge, calling on that strength of God, leaning on that strength. This spiritual strength is the ability to stand in the midst of change. It's the ability to act courageously, and it's the ability to persevere, to stay the course. And in doing this challenge, I believe we may need all three of those abilities. Ernest Holmes, speaking on something else, but I thought this quote was relevant, says, now this is going to call for faith and perseverance and fortitude. It is going to call for persistency of effort and certain flexible determination to see the thing through to that final conclusion. I think I added a word there. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> So we've been given this inner strength, this inner ability that we can activate through our intention, through our attention and intention. Think of the story of David and Goliath. Most of you are familiar with that biblical story. David, a boy too young to, to join the battle that the Israelites were fighting, yet he had the mental and spiritual strength to go up, get up against the biggest toughest soldier from the opposing army that everybody was terrified of. David was able to draw upon this inner reservoir of strength and fortitude through his faith in God. And so it is with us. We have this same ability to, we, as we go against the Goliath of, of the habit of complaining, of gossiping, the habit of criticizing, even criticizing ourselves. The message is clear from this scripture story. God is bigger than anything we are facing. God is bigger than our addiction to complaining. So we lean on this inner reservoir of strength to see us through. So we prepare to go into this 21 day challenge or not. Either way, you still have this inner quality of strength within you fortifying ourselves with this understanding. God is my source of strength, courage, and calm. I invite you to join me in this affirmation. Together, there is strength in me, a mighty strength, a renewing strength, a God-given strength. We're gonna move into a time of meditation now. I invite you to adjust your position if necessary. I see someone putting their coat over themselves to stay warm, that's good. And then let's go ahead and, and soften our gaze on the floor in front of us or close our eyes. Paying attention to our breath. And with each exhale, allowing any tension that's in the body to be released. Allowing our thoughts to calm. And releasing any concerns that we may be holding in our hearts. There is strength in me. My mind is strong, it is positive, it is calm. There is strength of purpose in me, strength of faith, strength that helps me to persevere, strength that helps me face any challenge, this God-given strength within me. There is strength a mighty strength, a renewing strength within me. 
strength that enables me to be my best and highest self that makes it possible for me to be gentle with others and gentle with myself as well. This God-given strength is within all people. And as I interact with others, I look for it and I call it forth through my faith in the presence of God within them. There is strength in me. And as we move into a time of silence, I invite you to use as an anchor so that the thoughts don't drift away. That simple affirmation, there is strength in me, a God-given strength. There is strength in me, a God-given strength in the silence. And as our time of meditation comes to a close, let us give thanks for this time set apart for a while, time of communion, connection, of renewal.
And as Brett and Patty share another song with us, I invite you to either join in or just let the music wash over you. John Randolph Price. I liked it, so I thought we could try it out together. God is lavish, unfailing abundance, the rich, omnipresent substance of the universe. This all-providing source of infinite prosperity is individualized as me, the reality of me. Isn't that a powerful statement? Yes. So, We'll have our offerings, and before we before we take that up, let's go ahead and do an offertory prayer, if you will, join me. 
taking a moment and just bringing gratitude to the heart and allowing it to flow up and above and around. We give thanks for this beautiful day, for coming together and for the gifts we're about to receive. We give thanks for the givers and all the volunteers and attendees here at this beautiful community. We bless the gifts now and dedicate them to the work of this ministry. Letting everybody know that God is greater than whatever we are facing. And spirit within leads us. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for the steady spirit. Thank you for the steady. Thank you for the steady spirit. Thank you for the steady. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Thank you for my health, spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, spirit. Thank you for my health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. Thank you for my life, spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life, spirit. Thank you for my life. My glory is my glory is my glory is light. My glory is my glory is my glory is light. Thank you for my wealth, spirit. Thank you for my wealth. Thank you for my wealth, spirit. Thank you for my wealth. My opulent, my opulent, my opulent wealth. My opulent, my opulent, my opulent wealth. Thank you for the state, spirit. Thank you for the state. Thank you for the state, spirit. Thank you for the state. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for the state, spirit. Thank you for the state, spirit. Thank you for the state, spirit. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Brett and Patty. Yes. <laughs> so we do have a few announcements today. Um, Wednesday we begin our discussion. It's dinner and discussion for the complaint-free world. And again, if you're planning on coming, please sign up. I think there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. There is a cost to cover the dinner. It is a light, very light supper, I should say. Not, don't get your expectations up. <laughs> light supper. No complaints about it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then following that at 7 p.m., or roughly around then, uh, will be our midweek service. On the 23rd, which is Friday, dinner in games. What a great night that is, and that is a wonderful meal which you will find nothing to complain about whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and bring your own favorite board games or card games. We have it's exactly what it is. We have dinner, we play games. And it's a great way to get to know this community. And then on the 6th of March, our sound bath, which is the first Wednesday of every month. On the 9th of March, we have a spring dance workshop with Candace Trich of Dance Alchemy. She comes in, choreography, brings very easy choreography, um, and it's for anybody with any body type, any range of experience. If you can move, you can dance. That's what she says. So, so um, there are flyers for that. And then I have choir practice on here. You want to say something about that? Sure. Uh, I have a, actually a, a sign-up sheet that anybody who wants to do choir, we're going to um, sing on Sunday and Easter Sunday. You don't have to be for both. You can be here for one or the other. Um, I have Palm Sunday music today, and Easter Sunday's coming. <laughs> I've been looking. 
It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. So we enjoyed our Christmas choir so much. So thank you, Patty, for doing this again. And then if you haven't gotten a lunch booklet, there's some out in the uh, foyer as well as that's a couple other booklets as well. We're asking for a, do a dollar donation if you have it. If not, I want you to have the, the booklets anyway. So, and then if you would be so kind and if you're able to move the chairs after the service in preparation for the rest of the week's dinner activities. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think we have a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this will be our theme song, <laughs> and it'll get better and better. Here we go. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. And a new day is dawning in my soul. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. And a new day is dawning in my soul. And a new day is dawning in my soul. Even or not, I ain't lying. I'm not trying to cover up the facts. I've been down, been betrayed, I've been broken open. Till I gave up the struggle at last. And I can see all the ways I've been gifted, and the wisdom that has brought me to this place. Through the twists and the turns, I have finally come to learn Trust in this amazing kind of grace I've got no complaints whatsoever I've got no complaints whatsoever I've got no complaints whatsoever And a new day is dawning in my soul and a new day is dawning in my soul. The high road is rising,ly easy. Forgiveness shows up without a fight. Through the ups and the downs, I see beauty all around. I'd rather be grateful than right. And I get to play with what I'm given. And I find such an unexpected harmonies Weaving through the light, deep dark shadows Till the music sets me free I've got no complaints whatsoever I've got no complaints whatsoever I've got no complaints whatsoever and a new day is dawning in my soul. And a new day is dawning in my soul. I've got no regrets. I've got no regrets. I am seriously blessed. I am seriously blessed. With such peace of mind. With such peace of mind. All time. All I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. I've got no complaints whatsoever. And a new day is dawning in my soul. And a new day is dawning in my soul. I've got no regrets. I am seriously blessed, and a new day is dawning in my soul. <laughs> So this time we'd like to say goodbye.
invite to our Facebook friends, and I have an idea. I'd like to have the cameras turn around so you can see, wave goodbye, but if you don't want to be seen, okay, just put your hands up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just work it high, turn around. So goodbye, we love you, we appreciate you. Keep waving. It's coming around. There we go. Wish you were here. Okay. Thank you, Ken.